Hello and welcome back to another session of Brick Therapy. In this session, I'm going to build and review Vintage LEGO Western Set 6765 Gold City Junction. This set was released in 1996 for $49.99. Today, a new one will set you back about $394. For that price, you get 350 pieces and 6 minifigures. Let's check out the images from the instructions. On the front, we see the completed set against the iconic Western theme background. On the back, we see some alternative builds. Check out Deputy Danny swimming in the water. This is the first time I saw Lego removing the legs to convey a minifigure in water. Let's take 30 seconds to put this set together, then I'll come back and give you my thoughts. Okay, here it is. Vintage LEGO Western set 6765 Gold City Junction. Let's take a look at the minifigures that came with this set. First we will look at Black Bart. He's the only bandit that comes in this set. He is identical to the one that came with set 6761, the bandit's secret hideout. Next we have Flat Nose Curly. He's unique to this set. He has brown legs, vest, buckle, and string bow tie pattern printed on a blue torso. He has a mustache, stubble, and black hair part printed head. This head was used for a lot of pirate minifig. To top him off, he came with a light gray cowboy hat. According to Wikipedia, Flat Nose Curly was a cowboy passing through Gold City Junction on a stagecoach. He is the fall guy for the Thompson game. Now let's look at Zack or Deputy Danny. We saw him in this exact configuration in the Sheriff's Lockup. Then there is Sheriff Wild Wyatt West. We have seen him in this exact configuration in the Sheriff's Lockup also. The next figure we will look at is the Banker, also known as Banker Goldpenny. He is unique to this set also. He has dark gray legs, black vest, gold bob, and $100 bills printed on a white torso. His head print has glasses with a pencil behind the ear and a pointed mustache. He is topped off with a classic black hair piece. Finally, we have the lone cavalry soldier with a bandana. We have seen him a couple times now. This set comes with three horses. One for Black Bart and two that pull the stagecoach. Let's take a look at the stagecoach. The stagecoach is built four studs wide. As I mentioned earlier, it's being pulled by two horses. The front boot has enough space for one driver. Right behind the driver is an area for the shotgun rider. But instead of a shotgun, we get three rifles to complement the two rifles on either side of the stagecoach. This is the most heavily armed stagecoach I have ever seen. And there's definitely reason for it. In its cargo area is a safe with four gold coins. The safe can be removed by opening the bar doors or by inserting a 1x2 dynamite tile into the slot behind the money panel on the left side of the stagecoach. This lifts up the technique spring that pushes out the safe from the back of the stagecoach. On the right side of the stagecoach, there is a 1x2 brick sized cubby that can hold a small object. Now let's look at the general store. The general store is built in a similar fashion to the sheriff's office. Starting on top, you see the general store sign. On either side of the sign, we see red shutters that swing open to allow minifigures behind to look through. On the other side of the general store, we have an open lot. At the back of the lot is a black fence. There's a large barrel with a rifle inside and close by, there's a pile of cannonballs and a cannon on wheels. The front porch has a barrel with items for purchase. Going inside the store, we see another small barrel with a shovel. On top of the white fence piece is a 1x2 $100 tile. Behind the counter is a rack with two rifles, a pistol, and an axe. On top there are two dynamite tiles. This is not your typical general store. This is more of a gun and weapons store. Now let's look at the bank. The first thing you might notice is a small Legoredo sign in the front. I thought this was Gold City Junction. On the other side, we see the same wanted poster for Flatfoot Thompson we saw with Sheriff's Lockup. On top is a large sign letting everyone know this is the bank. There are also full length windows with a bank written on them. The sign on the door says open, so let's go inside. Once inside, we have the bank teller area behind the full length window. The teller's desk is made up of a safe containing a 1x2 $100 tile and black bars. On top of the desk is another 1x2 $100 tile. Oddly, on the other side of the bank is a barred door, probably the bank's vault. There's nothing in the vault, but if we go back outside, we can see a opening in the foundation that allows Black Bart to slide a 1x2 diamond tile that lifts up a technique shock that ejects the blue bench on the front porch, allowing him to access the vault.
All right, there it is, 6765 Gold City Junction. This is an awesome playset. This set alone gives us everything we need to play out so many scenarios. As great as this set is, there are a lot of areas that could be improved. First, I would move the vault behind the teller. That wouldn't stop the bandit from using dynamite to blow it up from the outside, but it makes it more difficult for bandits to access if they come into the bank. I would change the general store's name to Gun Shop and have another larger building for the general store. If LEGO is going to call this Gold City Junction, they should change the sign that reads Legorado. I wish LEGO released a train and a train station that would complement this set. Otherwise, don't use Junction in the name of the city. This is the last set that makes up the town. I wish LEGO had a post office and a postal stagecoach. It would have been nice to have a stable and of course maybe a saloon and an inn. Fortunately, these are all buildings we can build ourselves with LEGO bricks. So far, I've enjoyed every set in the western theme. I cannot wait until I get to Fort Legorado. Well, that's it. I hope you enjoyed my review of Vintage LEGO Western Set 6765 Gold City Junction. I can't wait to see you on another session of Brick Therapy soon. Take care.